Today we're talking about lists of collections. We're, we've talked about them before, but I ran into a problem with lists of collections. A list of collection is a great way of passing a lot of information with just one variable. Essentially one variable not only points to a collection, but a whole list of collections that in effect are like a table in a database with a lot of records and a lot of fields in each record. And in this project I'm sort of emulating a large project by having five different modules. And two of them are form oriented modules. The form one and display list. And you recall in my first discussion a list of collections. I essentially went to the code behind of the form. And I just went to the bottom of the form and I defined a second class at the bottom of the form that contained the collection. It's the collection defining class, you might say. And the trouble with that is if you have a big project and multiple modules, <coughs> you're not able to access that definition. And there's probably several solutions, but I found the simplest solution is to just define a new class, which just contains the collection. And this makes it global across the whole project. And basically uh, this collection definition is three levels of abstraction on a, a name for an archive. And the first level is like uh, archive directory abbreviation like uh, S01 which is great if you have a list box and you just want to specify what what the archive is but you don't have a lot of space to display it. So you just want to use an abbreviation. And the second level is a short name, which is good if you have a list box for the user to select the archive. And you want a name that's not very long, so you can have a small list box, but also which is meaningful enough that the user will know what you're talking about when you display the name. And then finally, you want the uh, archive directory fully qualified name which is what the computer needs if it wants to look up a file in that archive. It'll be something like uh, x colon slash Doug slash Karen slash Chlorine slash static zero one, you know, the fully qualified name so that the program itself can actually find it. And the way we create another uh, separate class for the uh, archive collection definition is you can either go up to projects and left click on that and go to add class or you can go over to the solution explorer and right click on the solution explorer and then click on add and then click new item and then in the new item select class and probably the first one's simpler because it's fewer clicks but you know it's a matter of your choice and then and the second module, the first module is like an input where we're defining the collection. And you can keep pressing update list and cre keep defining new members until you want to finally display them. And when you press display, that calls this second module, which is a list view that has the three fields, uh, abbreviation, short name, and archive directory. These are defined with the column header. Uh, editor, of course, which I showed in previous videos on how to define a list view. So if we look at the code behind of the um, input module and the update list, essentially you have uh, local variables which save the values of the three text boxes. First of all, I check if the all three list boxes aren't empty, you know, or if any one of them is empty since I'm using an or. So it's saying if the first one's empty or the second one's empty or the third one's empty, pop up an error message box that says you have to fill in all three list boxes. And then in the code I save the uh, text box values into local variables and then I do a static archive.add 
where I do a new static archive def and I'm using Landon notation to set the values of each of the three fields in the static archive. And essentially up here I have a public list static archive with a static archive variable and a new list static archive. So I'm instantiating the static archive def uh, collection that we defined in a separate .cs module. And then after I add this to the archive list of collections, I uh, increment a scalar variable called uh, element count. And then I convert this element count to a string and display it in another list box on the form and I clear all three of the input fields and I set the focus to the first input field so we're ready to input the next member. Then if we look at the event handler for the display button by double clicking on that and going to the event handler we essentially uh, call the uh, second form which is the display list.cs form and call a member called display current list and then we do a show dialog to actually pop up the form and if we look at the top of the form we have a display list and a m underscore display list which defines a reference to the second windows form and if we go down to the uh, form load event you notice we instantiate this member variable as a new form uh, new form and essentially we pass a this which is the a reference to the current form which is the form one uh, in order to establish a connection between the two forms I've gone into details about this kind of inner form communication in previous videos so you might check those out but if we, oops, didn't mean to do that. I accidentally opened up the second form in a separate window and then closed that window. So if I want to regenerate the form uh, for this code behind, I can just press Shift F7 and that recreates that form. And well, I seem to have cl closed the uh, code behind. So if I press F7 with the form selected, that'll recreate the code behind. So F7 recreates the code behind, and Shift F7 recreates the form for future reference if you do that by accident. But in the code for the uh, display list, we have a constructor which is passed a uh, variable of type FRM IFCC which is the name of our main form so that this gets passed here and then I set the parameter that has this reference to the main form to another member variable that's a global member variable in this module so that I can reference this form from the display list I can reference the main form from the display list and I can reference the display list, list form from the form one so they can both reference each other and then in the display current um, method which we referenced via a dot operator from the member variable in the uh, form if you look here it's like uh, member variable for the form dot display current list. So this gets called before we do the show dialog on the same form variable. And basically in this, originally I actually instantiated a, a list of static archive def variable and then set that equal to the main form static archive variable that got filled in in the input form and I think that's an unnecessary step because we already have a variable referencing that form 
So I can just use the form reference dot and the static archive directly and a for each and then in the range variable. Actually the main reason we need a, a global class definition is this range variable which is defined as the same class type, the static archive def. Coincidentally, sad. But anyhow, as we go through this list of collections in the sad, we uh, establish a list view item and set it to the first uh, field value of the current sad record and then do uh, instantiate a list view item dot list view sub item and set that equal the text property of that equal to the second field in the sad record and the same thing with the third field in the sad record we set the a new list view list view sub item equal to uh, that third value and then in both cases we add uh, the sub items to the list view the L LVI we add the LVSI to the LVI and to uh, LVI sub items dot add methods and then finally to the main list view display that we created on the form we do an items add of this list view item that we created and that'll show one row and as the for each goes on it'll show all the rows that are in the list uh, the array of uh, collections in the list so if we compile and run this our uh, input uh, form comes up and say to find the first one is S01 and a short name of static 01 and then a, a fully qualified directory reference name is like I colon uh, slash say Mary and uh, Karen and Doug and then that the actual uh, directory name of static zero one and then if we do an update list you see the read-only field of uh, that keeps track of the element number increments to one and then we can do like a s zero two static zero two um, x colon slash uh, glorine jason carmel static zero two where static zero two is the actual directory underneath all these other directories and if we do a update list we see the element count goes to two and then if we do a display the uh, list box display pops up with a ni nicely formatted abbreviation short name and actual fully qualified directory name so we have communicated <coughs> a list of, co of collections across forms and in order to do that we had to define the uh, the definition of the collection itself in a separate module that's accessible by all the other modules that want to reference it and if you don't do that you just get an error it doesn't work so that's the main point of this uh, video well I hope I didn't ramble too much and that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe